Welcome along guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of Chops Destroys His Motorcycle <laughs> or otherwise known as the Ducati Hypermotor Art Restoration Project. Sorry for the delay in videos, I have really been awaiting special tools to arrive and things to turn up. It's been a bit of a nightmare project like this, trying to time everything to get a weekly video out. The good news is I have the special tools to strip down the head. So as part of this, we will take apart, get the other cylinder off the bike, strip down the head fully so I can send it off to factory projects. Massive, massive thank you to everyone who commented last time on the video. Apologies for the people who couldn't stand me. <laughs> working on a motorcycle with a chisel <laughs> and a hammer <laughs> i don't think they're part of the uh, ducati special parts kit yes i'm afraid these sorts of tools are not suitable for ducatis we'll keep these for the hondas as part of this episode today i can share with you my beautifully coated parts from factory projects Ooh. but let's roll that intro Okay, without further ado, let me pull out my kerosoted, kerosote? Oh God, Cerakote, Cerakoted parts and show them off. Have a look at these beauties. So these are the Cerakoted engine casings, the Cerakoted uh, cam covers. So this is burnt bronze is the official color of this. And this is satin black, I believe. So a lot, lot of people asking questions about Cerakote and how does it differ from to powder coat. The main difference with the Cerakote is it's a very thin coating. It's like a chemical process, uh, whereas powder coat is like applied in a powdered paint, basically, and the paint melts and then it coats the item. So this is tougher than, than powder coat. You can also you apply this to plastic. These are actually plastic. And of course, powder coat, because the way it's applied with uh, magnetic particles, so the, the, how the powder sticks to your item is via, uh, ma it's magnetized. So the particles of paint are magnetized to the metal. You can only spray metal items. Whereas Cerakote, you can do plastic parts, you can even do wood and stuff like that. So, and it's much stronger, it's much tougher. It's a really thin coating. So you can actually coat like the inside of these yokes because it's such a thin coating that won't make any difference to the fitment. So you don't have to mask off areas like that. What has come out rather nicely is my removal of the cast marks on the yokes. I'm happy with how they've come out. It's not absolutely perfect. You can see a little bit of a raise still around this one, but it looks a damn sight better than the standard uh, jobbies. So I'm incredibly pleased with the Cerakote stuff. I'm gonna get the, the heads and cylinders done as well now. So this was all done by a company called Factory Projects. I'll put links below. Send them an email, link below, but uh, I can highly recommend them. It looks absolutely beautiful. Shakshi! Also, a lot of people asking if I'm going open clutch on this now. Of course, you've got to go open clutch if you've got a Ducati. You've got to have that bit of Ducati clutch rattle. And uh, so I've gone for the Oberon kit. So massive thanks to Oberon. I've also got the slave cylinder as well, which will ho hopefully lighten up the clutch a little bit. New set of springs for the clutch. I still need to order some new clutch, an actual clutch plates. Well, not the plates, the, the fibres. And then, of course, on the top of the springs, you've got these little caps. I've got some red ones or some black ones. I think the black and this burnt bronze colour go really well together. And then, of course, we'd have the shiny new springs inside and then a little red piece sat. Oh, it's going to look nice, isn't it, eh? Look at that. How nice is that going to look when it's all back on the engine? Oh, it's lovely. As well, which I almost forgot about, I've got a chain and sprocket kit. I've gone for a 520 chain conversion. Now this was from a company called DR Bikes. Um, they do a hypermotard kit, do a kit for all sorts of bikes. But I wanted to go 520 chain, so that saves a bit of weight out of the chain. Gold on gold chain. That's a DID chain, the ZVMX chain at the top, top of the line, 520 chains. You can go 520 chain conversion, but you can't go for a cheap one. You need to really spend some decent money if you're going to go to a 520. I've also dropped a tooth on the front sprocket. 
I wanted to go up two on the rear as well, but the Renthal don't make a bigger sprocket for the back for the for the hypermotor because it comes with this strange carrier. The standard sprocket has all that built into the sprocket, which means it's an expensive sprocket. It's about 100, I think about 120 quid just for the sprocket. Whereas if you get it separately with the carrier, at least next time you just got to replace it with the cheaper sprocket. And obviously this is an aluminium sprocket, so that won't last as long as a steel sprocket, but it keeps all the unsprung weight down. But it comes on this lovely little carrier, which is uh, absolutely gorgeous. But that's just going to look incredibly fantastic on my powder coated swinging arm. So. Massive thanks to DR Bikes for helping me out with the chain of sprockets. Really appreciate it. I'll put links below. Go and check them out. Okay, so there's my engine. I've dextered it. I've wrapped it in cellophane, ready for the, uh, the, 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 the murder. I've got my special Ducati tools ready for head removal. So I think we are all set. <laughs> Only joking. Here are my special Ducati tools. We've got the tool to hold the crank so you can crank the engine. I've got the little uh, pronged tool to remove the, the pulley. Uh, I've got the tool to hold the clutch basket for when you're doing the clutch basket up. Not today, but we'll come to that one. And I think this one is one for the four valve Ducatis to get that uh, equivalent of that on the four valve. But that will also double up to hold my pulley while I remove this. I'm still missing a tool. I've been waiting over a week for it. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm going to just make do with this and a little bit of uh, ingenuity. Are you ready? There's going to be murder. Tools. Aha! Bingo! Ah, this cylinder head gasket is in much better condition than the other cylinder. I think this cylinder is a bit more protected from the elements. Could be why. Sweating like a rapist in court. The chisel's made an appearance. <laughs> Only very gently bit of pressure. There we go. Oh, there she goes. All right, and now I've got to be careful to, uh, I mean, I obviously, obviously want anything going into the engine at this point. Oh, baby. You're nearly there. There we go. I don't want any of those flakes. I like that bit of sealant material. Going into the engine. Tron was saying when these go back together, you need to remove the pistons from the com rods and fit the pistons to the cylinders first and then fit the whole cylinder onto the com rod when you put it back together. Otherwise you can damage the oil seal ring very easily. So I do need to get the gudgeon pins out of here, take the piston off, but uh, not the minute. That's a job for a bit later. Wipe away any grit which is close to the opening. So there we are, all cling filmed up. I'm just going to put a cover over that now, push that to one side. That'll stay like that until I get the cylinders and heads back from Twan. Well, so that's the uh, cylinder and head off. What I've also done, I've moved on and I've extracted all the valves up to the point you saw last time with the other, with the other uh, head. There's no point going through all that process again. But what I will show you with this one is actually how I removed all of the rest of the rockers. I've done it just by using uh, a five mil bolt and pulling them out and I made myself a little extractor using some sockets. So I've done all this on the other head already because that one's all completely stripped. So I'll just show you what I did removing these pins and then we're all done. I've showed you everything about the heads. I won't be putting these back together. Uh, Twan will be assembling all of these and giving them all back to me fully assembled. I'm not going and messing about with these Desmo heads trying to assemble it all myself. Oh no, Twan's doing that. I'm only stripping them because I've got to send the bare heads and cylinders off to be Cerakoted. If I didn't have to get them Cerakoted or didn't want to get them Cerakoted, I'd just send them complete off to Twan. But that's the only reason I'm splitting them in the first place. So they can be completely stripped. So they're going to be lovely and coated and protected. So uh, let's get these pins out. All the valves are out. 
As I said, no valves in this anymore. The rockers themselves now have to come out and they're held in with these pins here. Now it is like the KTM. If I screw a little five mil uh, bolt in there, I may even be able to pull this one. There you go. They just pull out. That one is particularly loose, thankfully. So there's the pin which holds the rocker in. So there's four rockers and then we extract the cam. So without further ado, let's remove the other four, get all the rockers out, and then we can get these sent off to factory projects to be Cerakoted. Another one. Have to use my little tool for this one. So I just use the bolt with the nut in it, and as I wind that in, and the bolt hits on the nut, continue to wind, and it starts to pull out the pin so far but it's enough to get it moving <laughs> for all to jump out so that's it final pieces in the bags good luck with that lot to aunt <laughs> While I've gone and got myself some lunch, the postman's turned up with the special tool I was missing to hold the pulley. So that basically goes on to this pulley like so, like that. And then that can then hold that pulley while I undo the nut with the special tool, which goes on there. So this is how you're supposed to remove those nuts. And of course, it, what it says in the manuals, these must be replaced. So you can't reuse these. So I'll get some new ones of those to put on. But that's how that's how that ends. That's all these special tools. So not only do you need the, the thing to hold the pulley, you need the nut to undo it. Guess that's how Ducati make their money. And last job. This little sucker off. Let's see how we get on with this. I'm tempted to use the, uh, the impact driver, but let's try it with this. Oh, so tight, I'm going to use the impact driver on that. eBay special. This has been so useful. However did I manage without an impact driver before? Bloody brilliant. Bloody brilliant. There she blows. Easy as pie. The whole cam. There she is. One camshaft. Ducati performance camshaft at that. So there we are. There is the cylinders. Both the heads, the little extra belt covers and stuff which bolt onto the cylinders. All this lot is now going off to factory projects for coating. Probably going to go like a dark uh, satin black on the cylinders and perhaps a gun metal on the actual heads themselves. So these are going to factory projects, all get coated. When I get them back, then I send the lot off to Twan for porting and reassembly. So uh, can't wait. Absolutely amazing. Let's have a little look at the inlet track standard. Hopefully Twan will be able to do a little bit of video of before and after. But that's the inlet track now. That is the exhaust. But it's, it's a bit dark, a bit, bit sooty. A bit sooty and sweeping there. You won't be able to see much. But uh, he's going to pour, flow that, work his magic on that. I can't wait. I can't wait. There we go. Might be a better view from this side. Standard inlet. Standard exhaust. I can't wait for him to work his magic on those. So he's going to do a bit of video of him doing the porting as well, so I can include that in the episode when I get these all back. I'm going to send the cylinders off to Twan as well, as I mentioned, because he also does a mod here for the oil feed. This is the oil feed into the into the head through the cylinder, and he actually puts an O makes a little recess here, puts an O-ring in here, because this can sometimes fail here, or if you put too much sealant down, you can block this, block it, and actually starve the cylinder of oil, so starve the head of oil. So he does a little mod where he puts an O-ring in here, rather than using lots of sealant around it. So uh, I'm sending in the cylinders as well. He can do the mod, which I'll show you when I get it back as well. And, of course, 
you can assemble the heads to the cylinders which is going to be tricky um, so yeah I'll leave that all to twan but now let's send them off for coating well that's about it guys thanks for watching those bits are now sent off to factory projects can't wait to see those can't wait to see those they're gonna look amazing the next episode we should actually start putting things back together I think this is the point whereby we stop taking things apart and then from now on we'll be putting things back together so that should be a bit more interesting as well just seeing how things come together how the bike transformed I can't wait to see it the engine is going to look amazing it's just going to look amazing I'm really really excited about this whole project but thanks for watching thanks for being involved thanks for your comments as always take care ride safe if you're back out riding again and I will see you next time for some more Ducati magic <laughs> see you later guys What do I want to show off first? <laughs> I've got some sexy things to show off in this episode. Bloody lovely. My precious! <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's a long hot day.